On today's episode of Locked On Utes, we're discussing which of the top players for that walked on Senior Day will be returning, also the ones that will not be more than likely, and talk about some of the other players that entered the transfer portal. All that and more on today's Locked On Utes. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Making Locked On YouTube your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcasts. If this is your first time listening to our show, make sure you like and subscribe. Love interacting with all of you on various social media platforms, including on Twitter. Today's episode of Locked On Utes is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Today's Make every moment more right now with new customers who can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. If your team wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. My name is JT Wister, so former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. And on today's show, we are going to be talking about, as I mentioned, the various kind of players for this Utah team that did walk on senior day. Talk about if they're coming back, if they're going to stay. All that, but before we do dive into that really quick, I did want to give you guys. Uh, I'll just say something. I, on yesterday's show, I discussed Nate Johnson and how he entered the portal, and I said that look, I've always, I've always liked and rooted for Nate and supported him, but I didn't, I never love when guys just leave before their their final game was what I said before, and I was or a source reached out to me and actually informed me that Nate Johnson was actually sick, and that is why he was not at the game. You know, we kind of heard about the flu bug going around. That was why uh, Z- Devon Vele wasn't able to walk either. So I heard that because Nate was sick. That's why he wasn't able to play. Had he been able to play, I already would have played and then would have entered the portal after that. Once again, that's what a, a source has spoken to and told me. So just wanted to clarify that since this is what's hard because there's all that information out there. Things can look one way better and actually the other. So that sounds like what's actually happened to Nate Johnson is he didn't want to play and be out there with his team because of the sickness. He wasn't able to. And then he was going to enter the transfer portal, which he now has. So moving on, though, let's talk about you know, some of the other Utah football players, the elite ones who I think will be coming back or won't be coming back. And first, let's start with one who already announced is going to be coming back. And that is Zamaya Vaughn. Zamaya Vaughn coming into this season, I thought would be a guy who would be playing his last season as a member of this Utah football team. I thought he was going to have a really strong year. And I thought he still had a very good year, but I don't think he was one of the best corners in maybe college football, as I maybe thought he had a chance to be. I thought he was a very good corner for this Utah team, but Look, he wants to. I'm sure Zamaya wants to play amongst the best. He actually said that he announced on Talking Utes that he would be coming back to school, and I'm sure Zamaya wants to play amongst the best of the best of the NFL, and that's his goal and aspirations. In the best games this year, Washington, Oregon, Arizona, the Utah pass defense got gashed, and multiple times in those games, Zamaya Vaughn got beat, and that's something we've seen throughout the season uh, with Zamaya a little bit too. Zamaya is very aggressive. And he's very good at undercutting kind of those short routes, jumping in front, breaking them up like that, and still provides good coverage downfield. But there were a couple of times throughout the year that he did get beat over the top. And I think when he went and got that feedback from NFL teams, which he even said he got feedback from NFL teams and doesn't feel like the best thing for him right now is to go out, I, I think he's right. I and mean, the best thing for him is to come back, refine his skills, and kind of develop in a couple of those key areas so that he can put himself in a better position coming up next year. But this is a huge get for Utah. Vaughn was still very good as a defensive back for Utah this past season. Once again, just got beat a couple of times over the top. Good, not great. If you want to be a higher pick in the NFL, that's kind of what you have to be is great. And I think that's where Vaughn is going to return to school, come back or find those skills. This is a huge get for Utah. Having experience in an elite corner like that will help them in their transition to the Big 12 where you were get a couple of those teams that are still going to want to air it out. I don't think the Utah – Past defense will be tested as much next year as they were this year because I don't anticipate them having to play as many top five quarterbacks or just elite like college football quarterbacks. They'll probably still have to play Shador Sanders. Uh, came out that he actually had a back injury. That's why he missed the, the game against Utah. So it doesn't sound like even if he had been, it was a big game. He, I don't think he would have been able to play in that. But uh, getting Vaughn back, huge for Utah once again. Did a great job holding it down from them in the secondary. This past season made a number, or a really good job, I should say. You know, Finished the year with 45 tackles, six pass breakups the team leader in that category. So huge get for Utah to get Zamaya Vaughn back. But unfortunately, the same we may not be able to say 
about some of Utah's other elite players and another elite defensive back in Cole Bishop. Cole Bishop walked. He started for this team for three years now and played a major role in their success, being back to back Pac-12 champs, helping them have an elite defense for most of the college football season until, you know, injuries and they kind of came undone at the very end of it. But Bishop second on the team in tackles, 60 tackles. He had three sacks, also three passes deflected, two interceptions, forced a fumble and recovered a couple as well. An exceptional tackler in space and uh, very well could be the best player on this Utah defense or one of them. I, I think I would officially go Joan Ellis just when we sit here and look back on the scene. I think Joan Ellis was the best. And then I might go some, there are so many elite players though that made up that unit. So it's hard not to say a number of guys um, for their contributions and what they were able to do. But this would be a tough loss for Utah if they did lose Bishop. I think guys like a, a Nate Ritchie and a couple of the other depth pieces they have, they could survive without him. But this is, it's very interesting to see what Bishop's going to do. I think he's going to, I think if he gets the feedback he would like from the NFL, I assume he would go to the NFL and, you know, started for three years now. He can get a little better, I'm sure, if he comes back, but who wouldn't want to go, you know, go to the NFL and capitalize on that after playing at a school for three years? So I got no problem if he goes off and does that. And I, I do think that it will be very interesting to see his draft evaluation just because I think Cole is very good. He is not the biggest safety in the world so i wonder if the size concerns are something that the nfl level evaluators will question i think wherever he goes he's going to fall out and shine but we know in the nfl these guys get knocked a lot for you know some of the testing numbers the size height weight and speed rather than the ability they show on the field and i do think that's what could be the case with cole bishop if he goes but i think that's what he's waiting to figure out right now is he going to be drafted in a range that's appealing to him probably second or third round range or is he a little farther back and then it's like okay let me come back to utah fix just improve on a couple things maybe you know coverage aspect wise or just every year you come back you're going to get a little better i think those are things that are on the mind of cole bishop currently so we'll see how he decides to operate and do that last guy i want to mention in the first one and then in the second segment we'll be diving into all the other seniors that walked and are going to be coming back is devon vele did not walk we found out because he was sick and vele is a guy who his future still kind of hangs in the balance but he recently made an appearance and on a radio show and said that he was, you know, kind of didn't want to really elaborate on his future now. But then Josh Furlong reported out there that it does sound like that this was Vele's lap, that Vele will more than likely be leaving Utah. And I think that makes a lot of sense because with Vele, uh, he's a guy who's accomplished so much for this team. But I, I feel like this is a situation where he does have things now that he wants to, you know, move on just try to do and chase those other opportunities, particularly at the NFL level. He's a guy I've talked about before. I felt like he came back to this Utah team with a goal in mind, things he wanted to do and a role in this passing game that he thought would be more defined. And that role really didn't get defined until kind of towards the end of the season with when, um, excuse me, when Bryson Barnes started to get really comfortable and then things got situated in short end. But Vele still had a really good year, led Utah in receiving 43 catches, 593 yards, had three touchdowns, two of those coming in one game against Cal, if I remember back correctly. So, yeah, losing Vela would be tough, but with Cam coming back, it sounds like Brant might come back just because he didn't walk. That's my current, like, feelings on that is I do think at the moment Brant's going to come back since he didn't walk. So Utah will still have some pass catchers, but, yes, they'll probably look into the portal to add another elite number one receiver because that's what they're losing in Devon Vele, who was that for this team, and uh, will be departing the NFL. I think his skill set will translate well to the NFL. You're talking about a big body guy in Vela. If he does decide to go, pretty good route runner, do a good job adjusting to the ball in air. Not the best on 50-50 balls, in my opinion, and not that breakaway speed. So I don't think it would be the highest pick in the world, but you could definitely see him being a mid-round steal. You know, no one predicted Puka Nakua to do what he did. I'm not saying Vela would be Puka Nakua, but I do think he's a guy who could surprise some people even next season in the NFL. So, yeah, Bishop and Vele's future still hangs in the balance. Vele definitely feels more like he's going to go based on what's been reported. And then you have a Cole Bishop situation where I'm very also curious to see kind of what Cole Bishop is going to end up doing. So that's another one that uh, we'll just have to wait and see how it all pans out because Utah is definitely a lot better when they have – their elite defensive back in Cole Bishop, who has done so many things for this team now, um, as we kind of discussed and mentioned. But lots still up in the air and uh, and a lot to be decided on because there's also a number of seniors that we're still kind of waiting on to see what situation that they are going to do and if they're going to come back or not. This is a Utah team that does have depth in, uh, in a lot of ways, but 
I, I do think that they are going to have a, a chance to still do some amazing – this Utah team, excuse me, is going to have a chance to do some amazing things next season despite some of the players they're losing. And I want to talk about the seniors though, that they could potentially be losing with you guys in a moment. But first, I want to talk to you about our great friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options that includes the spread, player props, over-unders, and so much more. So you can visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL, and obviously with FanDuel 2, there is a great slate of college football games coming up this Saturday. Do you think Oklahoma, excuse me, do you think Texas is going to beat Oklahoma State in the Big 12 championship game? Oregon and Washington. Pac-12 final on Friday should be an absolute thriller. Then talking about some of the other great games Saturday that you have coming up, Michigan against Iowa. Maybe that won't, that's probably not a great game, but a great game will be Michigan versus Georgia winner getting into the playoff loser more than likely eliminated. So lots of fun stuff coming up to discuss for big games to bet on when in terms of FanDuel. Also want to talk to you about another sponsor of our show in LinkedIn Talent Solutions. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have the many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and they might not have time or resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. And they just have launched a feature that allows you to write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. You can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All righty. Talking about the seniors that I think are going to go versus come back. We did this last week. And then you officially get the guys who decided to walk for Utah. And, you know, some of these guys will mow over the decision and others I think are just pretty clearly going to go. Uh, we'll start with some quick ones just off the top. I do think a Chase Carter, a Hayden Fury, and a Jason as well. All three of those guys, I think they're for sure going to leave the program. You know, I just, I think it's one of those things like they've just spent enough time here now. Time, they're going to move on and do what's, uh, and do the next opportunity, depending on if they have, you know, eligibility left or if they're just going to go off in the next chapter of their life. All right, uh, moving on from that, let's talk about the other guys. Miles Battle did officially walk. Miles Battle coming over from Ole Miss. Always felt like Miles was a one year kind of thing. He did, you know, he was doing his Utah updates. He was always fun on social media, made a number of nice plays for Utah all season and helped them have a strong defense. But I do feel like it's Battle. This was always a one year kind of thing for him. He was at Ole Miss for four years. So I think Battle is kind of in a position where he's like, I'm good now. I got done what I needed to do. I had a great time out in Utah, but it's time for me to move on and do what's next. That's just where I'm sitting at currently with what I think Miles Battle is going to do. All these are just giving my opinions on what I think these guys are going to do, uh, like last week. So Miles Battle is a guy that I, once again, I do think has played his last, actually, not his last snap for Utah. I think Miles will play in the bowl game, but I do think after the bowl game is when we'll see him uh, declare for the NFL or, um, yeah, just go on to the NFL and chase that. Then moving on, we got Keaton Bills. Bills is an interesting one. Started for this team for three years now. He did walk. I think Bills is very much dependent on what he hears from NFL evaluators. I think if he is not going to be in draftable range that he was hoping to be, I think he will come back for another reason season. At the moment, I'm 50-50 on him. Maybe a slight lean towards coming back, maybe a 51-49. I thought he was good this year, but I, I didn't think he was great in terms of – and he is not as strong as a Satawa Laumea is where Satawa were coming up on. You guys know I said last week I think Satawa was going to go, and that hasn't changed when evaluating over the options on this list too. So – yeah, talking about Keaton, I think Keaton does a really good job in the run game, especially pass game. A couple of miscommunications with him and Spencer throughout the year. Hard to tell whose fault that would be at times. But, yeah, I, I think Keaton, his draft stock won't be quite where he wants it yet, so I do expect him to come back for at least one more year and try to refine a couple of those skill sets. So, Or, once again, I could see him going, but at the moment, 51-49. Then Satawa Laumea, I do think Satawa is gone. Guy who started for this team for a few seasons now, played a ton, done a really good job in the interior and out at right tackle for Utah as of recently. So I do see Satawa going off the NFL. I think he will be kind of in that 
probably third and fourth round range for an NFL guard. I expect him to be the first Utah football player drafted in this year's class. And I do think that this is a spot where Satala is in a strong position to, you know, be a highly drafted player, go for an NFL team, have a chance to compete for a starting spot. I think it's time for him to go. I think he always intended this to be his last year. And I do expect Satala to move on. Uh, oh, Emery Simmons. I, I do expect Emery Simmons, of course, to move on. Just feel bad for him. He's another one where with Cam rising out, just felt like it never materialized. He had a couple of drops too. So uh, that was one that just a transfer that came over. It didn't quite pan out as we were all hoping it uh, it would there. Last guy to talk about is Thomas Yasmin. And with Thomas Yasmin, this is an interesting one because I have seen, there's been a lot of things about like, does Thomas just want to return back to Australia? Maybe do some stuff with rugby. Does he want to go to the NFL? I have seen him as in the middle of the season on a Mel Kuyper. Like it just, he ranked inside the top 10 for tight ends. He's such an ex extreme and exceptional athlete. And when you turn on just his highlight tape, as we've talked about before too, that highlight tape is so impressive that there are a number of plays and moments that I do feel like could garner him attention in the NFL draft. And I think he would get drafted if he did declare just probably in that fifth, sixth or seventh round range, because he's being drafted a lot off the potentially showed for those big plays, but with the right coaching, I think he could be really good. And yeah, there's a chance that he, I think actually, I'm not sure if there's a chance for him to come back. I, I'm tr I blanked on his eligibility, but um, I do think he's going to be gone anyways. I just think that it, he's another one where it's time, whether it's going home or going to the NFL, I think he'll go to the NFL and get picked up by a team. He's a guy who's given a lot to this Utah football program, had the injury this season, unfortunately, so couldn't figure finish it out as he was hoping for. But I, I do expect Yasmin to go. So when you're talking about what Utah will be losing, in my opinion, they'll be losing one of their elite offensive linemen in Satawa Laumea. I said Keaton, you know, still 50, 50, 51, 49. Uh, I think Battle will be gone, so you'll lose a player in the secondary also think that this Utah team is going to lose an elite tight end in Thomas Yasmin. So you will be losing some guys that you need to replace. That's without even mentioning the potential departure of Cole Bishop. And, of course, Devon Bailey will be leaving. So this is a Utah team. What's nice for Utah is if Brant comes back and then you have Landon King back, you have two dynamic pass catchers at the tight end spots still. And Mickey will come back, I'm sure, too, and he's still defining and growing. And he'll be even better next year just to be more comfortable in the tight end position. But you'll definitely want to get more better at receiver. We're going to talk about a receiver who just transferred the transfer portal on on. Oh, excuse me. We just talked about we'll talk about a receiver who entered the transfer portal. Then on tomorrow's show, we are actually going to be diving into last segment today. We'll be touching on more Utah players entering the transfer portal tomorrow. I want to focus on transfer portal targets for Utah, looking at which players I think are going to be entering the portal, seeing if they're going to be guys or, or excuse me, seeing which guys are going to come back to seeing which transfer portal players that Utah is able to lure in. So that's what we're going to be discussing on tomorrow's Locked On News. But before we do get out of here, I do want to talk about some of those other transfer needs that Utah now has because guys decided to leave the program and enter the portal, which is already getting loaded up, especially with talent at the quarterback spot. But we are definitely going to be talking about that tomorrow. I know a lot of you were talking about Utah needs a quarterback. I, I don't think they're going to be able to find a very good way to transfer portal again, or at least an elite one, because who wants to come be a backup? But that will be on the uh, – on tomorrow's show. But before we get out of here today, I want to talk to you guys about our friends at Prize Picks before we dive into about the transfer portal for Utah departures. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. We are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. With basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from a special leagues, a league created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, you can do LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three pointers made and received. Exceptions. Prize Picks even offers you a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured for football and basketball games. If a, you have a player exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. Player in, the player and staff types that you're selecting are super easy to find and use. You can highlight your winnings from Prize Picks, and it's just simply fun and easy to play the game. You can go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Once again, you can go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. All righty. Going back into this one, talking about the transfer portal as it relates to Utah, more departures that we need to touch on. Makai Cope. Uh, is another guy for Utah that just exited the program. He'll enter the transfer portal. And this makes sense when uh, 
you're looking at Cope on the season. I was trying to remember if he did catch a pass, and he did not, unfortunately, this season. So year didn't go out playing. We thought Cope saw a few opportunities last year was his team's kind of fourth receiver. He made that one-handed grab in the spring game that got us all excited. But, you know, this year with Money Parks being out there, obviously, and we mentioned the injury to Cam, so he weren't throwing the ball as much. So whether it was Money, Vele, and then the emergence, too, of Mikey Matthews, that's where there really wasn't any room going forward for Cope, it felt like. So this is the best move for him, I think, to go chase an opportunity to get more playing time receptions because I think he's a talented player, but just didn't work at Utah. Got some receivers who are, I just feel like, a little better right now and are in that strong, in that position to earn more playing time. So smart move by Makai to go on to that next opportunity. Fabian Marks is also leading. He's got two years of eligibility left. The guy who we saw a little bit over the past few years did not see much of him this year with how loaded the Utah cornerback position was with the JT Broughton's out there you know we saw some Teo Johnson at corner slash safety we expect him to be a lot of safety next season pairing with Sione Vaki a lot then other defensive backs obviously we saw it was Miles Battle JT Broughton and Zamaya Vaughn so there wasn't a lot of room for Fabian I think he's done a really good job I think he could be a quality other like complimentary corner somewhere so I do expect him to garner interest wherever he goes and it's another position where it's just lost depth for Utah, so you will have to go in the portal and find some guys, even though we did see some nice things from Smith Snowden throughout the season. Also, another guy who departed Utah is was a was a player for them, one of their linebackers for Utah, and then Jocelyn Malaska, the redshirt freshman out of Bethany, Oklahoma. Played a little bit on special teams mostly, but didn't see a lot of time. And I think, once again, just another guy who the best opportunity for him to chase and find playing time is with another program. So I think he made the best decision there. But all these guys were depth pieces for Utah. These most recent ones I just mentioned, none of those guys starters. So I do think that the biggest thing for Utah in the transfer portal as it relates to those spots, well, I guess defensive back because the Miles Battle is going to leave. You do need to hopefully find one more starter there as well as get some added depth, although – I think Smith Snowden could be ready to be the starter there to go along with Zamaya Vaughn and JT Broughton holding it down on the outside. So you just need to find depth is the biggest thing, whether it's through these recruiting classes or bringing in some transfers. I think that's what Utah is going to do a good job in the portal. But what positions are major needs and targets for Utah in the portal? That's what we'll be discussing on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Utes. Thank you again for all of you who finished all the way to the end of the show. I do greatly appreciate it, especially when I got tripped up on my words a few times like I did in today's episode. But that will do it for us on this episode of Locked On Utes, and we'll be back with you tomorrow.